Good morning, everyone. My name is Charles McNamara. I wanted to take a second to say hello. Thank you all for tuning in today. Happy Friday, September 2nd, 2022. Uh, I am the Director of Operations at Guardian Group Services. I want to talk a little bit about you know our company and what we do. Today is going to be the first in many of a special series that we are planning to do. We're going to talk about different topics in the security and fire safety field. Uh, our owner, founder, the Bruce Weiss, uh, started the company. I'm going to talk about uh, this very important training. And in the topic of training, we focus on security guard training. So the pre-assignment for new guards, the 16 hour, the eight hour annual for the refresher training, which is mandatory to be done every year. We do a lot of fire guard prep courses, the FO1, the FO2, the FO3, the FO4, uh, you name it, we do teach it, uh, as well as the F80 for shelters. This topic today is going to be the F89, very important stuff for properties here in New York City. We also focus on OSHA training. We are also approved with the Red Cross. We do a lot of safety training for first aid, CPR, AED. We are the one-stop shop for your training needs. And today's topic, it's a big one, the F89, the Fire and Life Safety Director course. So I wanna talk about this because sometimes people are really not sure what they're getting into or what they need to do uh, to become a fire and life safety director. It has changed over the years. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the process so those individuals know what to expect. So for those people who are looking to become a FLSD, they have to do three things, okay? The first one is a 20 hour um, course it's just focusing on fire, fire safety. Uh, then the next step, it's going to be seven hours worth of training for non-fire emergencies. And then four hours on active shooter and medical emergency response. So the course is step one. It is 31 hours in length. Once you complete that, you are not an FSD yet. You have to do the second part, which is the computer based exam. You have to go to the fire department to take a computer based exam. And then the third and the final step is you will take an on-site with an inspector from the fire department. So it is a very detailed process. It's very involved. It's very different. It's not the same as your fire guard prep classes. Now, everybody will ask, hey, Charlie, you know, what, what does an FSD make? If I go get this license, uh, how much can I be earning if I take on that responsibility? And it's a big responsibility, you know, looking at some statistics um, through the New York State Department of Labor. Uh, we, you know, comb some websites like uh, LinkedIn, ZipRecruiter, Monster.com. On average, uh, the salary in New York City uh, falls between 62000 and 79000 per year. Now take that with a grain of salt because obviously that's something that you need to talk with your employer um, when you are on an interview, All right? But that's the typical salary in New York City. Now, where do I get this information? Um, what type of materials am I gonna be looking at? Well, you know, the booklet is pretty large, but everything can be found on the FDNY website. Uh, the booklet, it's very large. It's over 400 pages. And that's of now, 2022, the study material. It's a very big booklet. So this is a course that you really do have to dedicate time to study, soak in the material, and really make sure that you understand the codes and the job. Because once again, for this course, it is a 31-hour class. First, then a computer-based test at the fire department at Nine Metro Tech in Brooklyn, New York. And then the third and the final step is you're going to be taking an on-site exam with the fire department. So for um, those people who may not be familiar with that process, um, to become an FSD, it's very detailed. There's a lot of studying. There's a lot of work that you have to put in on your end, um, and you really kind of become like a first responder. If there is an emergency, you are the point person. You're going to the panel, you're making announcements, you're trying to get information from your team, from the brigade members, 
um, from wardens on the floor. So you really have to know the building. So the class and the computer-based test kind of gear you up to understand the law, the codes, the rules, the regulations. But the on-site exam is site-specific. And then when we talk about the actual license, the license is specific to that building. You can't transfer it over. So let's just say if you're working at building A, and let's just say maybe you relocate, um, you get transferred, or there's an opening at another building, you have to take an on-site at the new building. Okay, so I tell everybody, once you get this license, make sure that you renew it with the fire department. When you have to renew, it's $15. It's valid uh, for three years, just like everything else with the fire department. But when you go on to your next building, you will have to take an on-site at that property. So very, very detailed. Um, what are the topics in the, the course? It, it's a lot. And we're going to go through them, you know, little by little. Um, the first one is going to talk about fire safety and EAP plans, emergency action plans, big, big world um, of planning, emergency preparedness and planning um, is going to be key to being a good FLSD. Another topic, um, which in the beginning, it may seem like a lot, but it does mold in together. Uh, you need to know and understand the local laws. You're going to have a lot of test questions about local law because it's going to be your job and your responsibility to enforce them at the property that you work at. So local law 5, local law 16, local law 26, local law 41, 58, and uh, 88. The duties and responsibilities are going to be like the meat and potatoes of that course. Um, the main FLSD has some roles. The brigade member has some roles, the wardens, the searchers, everybody has certain duties, but you need to know not only yours, but those individuals as well. Because when you get an alarm, you don't know if it's a true alarm just yet. So you have to investigate. You've got to go out there, check it out, find out if it's real or not. So you need to know your role. Um, number one, you are always going to respond to the fire command center. The next topic that you're going to get into, um, basic fire science and fire matics. On the next topic you are going to get into will be building construction, right? How buildings are built, what type of materials, and fire protection systems. The next topic that you will get into will be sprinklers and standpipes and fire alarm systems. The fire protection system, big, big part of the job. HVAC and purge systems. Now you're not going to really get into it on the engineering side, but you do have to understand how that works with your fire command station in your building and in your property. Um, you know, if you have to evacuate, right, you want to get rid of that dirty smoke, get it out of the building. You want to purge it from the property, but where is it going? Emergency power systems. We're talking about generators, battery backup systems. And if you have them, they too need to be inspected, tested, and maintained. Refrigeration and commercial cooking systems. Now, not every building is going to have a commercial cooking system, um, but you're probably going to have some type of refrigeration system in the building. Engineers might be responsible for that. Hot work. Hot topic. Impairments, right? And if you have an impairment, you're going to have to have what's called an impairment coordinator, the FO1. Very, very big. If you have an impairment, you have to have fire guards in place to monitor what's going on. The course will also talk about portable fire extinguishers, right? And they're going to get into the classes of fire, A, B, C, D, and K. Uh, it's going to get into the pass system, pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. They, too, need to be inspected, tested, and maintained. Another topic which is pretty new to most um, people who take this course, fumigation and the procedures. Fire department used to get a lot of calls, uh, false alarms, when uh, companies would come in and spray. Uh, they were you know, doing work in the buildings and not knowing about it. The system is online, and then they were there, and you got unwarranted and unnecessary alarms. So new procedures in regards to that. You also need to know the whole menu 
of other certificates of fitness. So, you know, I talked about the fire guards, FO1, 2, and 3, and 4. Some others that you need to know, like S12, sprinklers, S13, standpipes. Um, there's a bunch more, right? Not going to get too much into them. I don't want to play bingo, uh, but B29 for batteries, G60 and F60. Um, all of that will go into detail in the actual training course for the fire department. The next topic, I know a lot of people uh, get all riled up, record keeping, right? Big part of the job, you have to keep good records. Uh, when the fire department comes in, they are going to ask you for the log books and record books. So you need to have them readily available when they walk in. Also, if you have good record keeping, kind of keeps you focused on preventative maintenance on the properties, on things that you need to check and do those inspections, testing and maintenance as required by law. One of my favorites, I love going out there and doing these fire safety and EAP training drills, right? EAP emergency action plan. So the fire department looks at it in uh, two different ways. We're doing fire training, right? To deal with fire related emergencies and EAP, all of the non-fire, right? Chemicals, uh, medical emergency, active shooter. So we're doing fire safety and EAP training and drills. Another big topic, um, you know, how do you respond to those types of emergencies? What do you do when you hear the audibles um, going off, when you see the visual alarms going off? What do you do? Um, very important stuff. Also, another big topic, active shooter. What do you do? Um, you know, the ABCs, avoid, barricade and confront or run, hide and fight. I think most of us are kind of um, aware of those situations. They're occurring more often as you turn on the news. And then at the end, there's an exam, right? So you have one test, right, for your fire and another test for your non-fire topics. Um, very detailed. There's a lot of questions. Um, it's all multiple choice, A, B, C, or D. Uh, but once you pass the classroom exam, you will have a certain time frame that you have to go to the fire department at 9 Metro Tech and take the computer-based exam, right? Once you complete that second part, the building management representative um, will have to schedule you for the on-site. So you are going to work very closely with your security supervisor, your building engineers, your property management. Um, you do really get involved because you have to know that property. Um, you know, myself, I have taught over a thousand classes. Um, I enjoy what I do because of the people that I work with. And I have a really good success passing rate um, because I understand with this type of course, you know, you can't rush through it. You really have to digest that material. Um, so it's something that you should be prepared for. You should take it seriously. There is a lot of information that you have to absorb. Uh, at Guardian Group Services, we will be offering this course uh, online for those who are interested. You can book all of the training on our website. We're actually going to be doing them consecutively on the weekend. So it's nice, quiet time. You can do it virtually online through Zoom. All right. So you could book all of those training classes on our website at guardiangroupservices.com. We have subject matter experts that have been doing this for years. And, you know, we're happy to help individuals meet their training goals. We also do on-site preparation, so we get people ready for that actual on-site, but that's going to be very specific to your building and to your property. Um, so we're going to be hosting these classes on Saturdays. Uh, our start time will be 9 a.m. Feel free to visit the website, guardiangroupservices.com, for all of your training needs. And, uh, you know, people will say, well, what happens once, you know, I get through this? You know, how do I get a job? Um, you know, there's the traditional way, right? You can check with your company, your human resources department, check the classifieds and, and the newspapers and on the internet. Uh, but we also have a recruitment manager who can assist in those things. Uh, and their number is listed here, 646-767-3719. Once again, folks, Guardian Group Service here for your training needs. We hope you enjoyed this quick overview of the F-89 Fire Safety Director course information. Uh, we're going to be rolling out more 
videos like this in the future. So we'd love to hear your thoughts on what topic you want next.